Let's get into the 2023 Spanish Spanish Grand Prix qualifying. So I've gone through all the qualifying data, made some observations, some notes, and some interesting things that I don't think we saw during the broadcast. And if you're wondering, why should I listen to you talk about this? Well, this is basically what I used to do for a job for the last 10 years when I was working at Force India and Red Bull Racing. And what I'm doing here is very equivalent to what teams will do in something they called a competitor analysis. So I'll look through all the pace, the performance, and try to make speculations, inform speculations as to why a specific team or driver is fast or slow, what they could have done better, and what we might have missed just from watching the TV. And I think data is something super, super cool about Formula One. It sounds intimidating, but I guarantee you, if you hang with me through this conversation, this discussion, I think you'll walk out of this uh, more informed and with a slightly better picture, and you will walk out of this with more questions, because I know this season seems like it's a little bit boring, a little bit predictable, but if we look through the data, you will find there's a lot of stuff that the, the TV is missing that you don't get to see. And I hope I can highlight some of that for you and help enrich your enjoyment of Formula One. So looking back to qualifying yesterday, it was a super, super tricky session. The session started off um, P3, a little bit of rain, a bit of damp track. Offline was treacherous. And the big question I have is Red Bull or Max Verstappen that far ahead of everybody else or what? And the second question I have, which we may not be able to answer, is everybody's brought upgrades from Monaco and Barcelona. Are these upgrades working and what can we expect from them? And if you like this kind of stuff, if you're on the Twitch chat, uh, type data in the chat, exclamation data. And if you're on YouTube, there's a link in the description. And if you're on TikTok live, check it out, but it's a newsletter. So this is, I'm about to show you part of my newsletter um, that goes out every FP2, every qualifying and every race. I'll do it a couple hours or the day after the morning after. Uh, what I'm about to show you is like 10% of what's in this thing. So anyway, let's look at qualifying results. So. Qualifying results here, we can see Max Verstappen is literally nearly half a second up from Carlos Sainz. We had a huge upset. We've got Fernando Alonso down in P9. We've got Perez not making it through to Q3. Um, Charles Leclerc did not make it out Q1. That, that absolutely blows my mind. Uh, and unfortunately, both the Williams out at the back. So we're going to look at the pace from all these guys in just a second. But here's something interesting, I think. Let's look at Let's look at all the team's qualifying performances that we've seen um, so far this year. So here's every team's qualifying performance so far this year. And you can see Red Bull are on zero. They're the reference. They're the fastest car at pretty much every race this year in qualifying, except for Baku, right? Let me just mute that. So look at this. I mean, like some of the teams, Aston Martin have been getting closer and closer in Miami and Monaco. And look what happened this weekend. Okay, Stroll was the fastest Aston, and that puts him quite far off. I don't know what happened to Fernando. We're going to go look at his lap in a second. But, but yeah, I mean, everybody here, this tells me, looking at this, Red Bull have basically opened the gap in this event to uh, Mercedes, to Alpine, Ferrari. Uh, McLaren found an improvement this weekend, and Lando is so far up because the midfield, relative to Red Bull, dropped the ball massively. Uh, and I think, I think Lando did a really good job in qualifying. Again, Haas... Their ping pong, every other qualifying session is all over the place. So I, I don't understand it. Alfa Romeo in the mud. Uh, Williams with their worst qualifying performance of the season. And I think a lot of that comes down to the teams dealing with track conditions. So, but here's, here's how that story went. And if that was every qualifying session this year, the fastest lap, the fa not necessarily the Q3 lap, but the fastest lap. And here is the qualifying pace evolution for each driver. So, I mean, the, the first thing that stands out to me massively here is here's Hamilton. Hamilton did, he went a little bit later than everybody else in Q1, and he was at the top of the timesheets at the end of Q1. In Q2, he's slower. And then in Q3, he is barely faster than he went in Q1. So something, something very suboptimal about their approach, their tire preparation, or something else going on there. And if you look at Max, Max went early in Q1, not a particularly impressive lap time. Q2, huge gap. And then in Q3, he absolutely blitzed the field. But if we if we go back, if we go back throughout the weekend and actually look at that, that was kind of the gap that Max had to the entire field uh, in every practice session. I know it's just practice, but that's pretty impressive. So I, I think Max on a different level, there's a lot of drivers out of pace order, a lot of drivers struggling. So is this a, a representation of team's pace? I don't think so. Is this a representation of team's adaptability in very tricky track conditions? Uh, I, I think yes. And I think we've seen throughout this that they've they've done a good job. And regardless if they're on used or new tires, um, it wasn't particularly, yeah. I mean, Hamilton had to burn up tires to try and get in 
to Q3. So that just goes to show you, I, I think there's a lot of talk that their, their pace is improving and the car and the platform is better. And I think that's probably true. It's possibly true, but I don't think that we got to see that pace. What, you know, because let's look at what that pace and that gap looks like. Here's everybody's gap to pole. And this, this axis is something I put it against percentage so that we can look at this every track and compare it. Verstappen setting the reference at a 112.272 signs 0.6% off. Norris just behind that. And then Gasly and Hamilton and Stroll. I mean, obviously Alonso had issues with his car and I expected Alonso to have a much better qualifying result than this, but this is this is the midfield battle it's literally red bull this front group and then the formula 1.5 group from haas all the way back to williams and this is a barcelona's a, a relatively high downforce track getting rid of the chicane we had a lot of questions it's like oh who's gonna go flat through the final corner in turn 14. that's actually not that important and i'll, and I'll come back to that in just a second so let's look quickly at verstappen and Sainz's lap and try to try to make out what we can of signs versus Verstappen because this is this is our fastest two cars and I mean signs at 0.6 percent off is uh pretty pretty staggering so let's just move that camera there so you can see everything so starting the lap Max actually looked like he was losing out a little bit on the brakes into turn one especially in free practice two and everybody's like oh Red Bull's not very good on the brakes and I think that was just a little bit of an underperformance and often a thing that happens in Barcelona is tires are not prepared for turn one and usually, like when I was a performance engineer, we would always use different brake balance maps to try and get a little bit more bite out of turn one. But if you lock up there, you bend the whole lap. So they're building up to it. And by qualifying, uh, Max was on top of that and one of the most impressive uh, turn one into turn two of the weekend. You can see here, looking at the data a little bit closer, um, Max is a little bit delayed on throttle, but also look at look at um, signs. Signs a little bit of a lift through turn three not a sign uh, this is a good indication that the ferrari probably has a little bit less downforce than the red bull but even then look at the straight line speed everywhere else uh signs had a good run out of two so he has good top speed here but turn down to turn one down to turn 10 and out of the final corner the red bull red bull is pretty impressive and then if you look at the time gains between signs and verstappen verstappen gains the most here through turn one two this is a little bit down to three and then all the way up through turn seven, Verstappen just claws away a little bit more lap time through every corner. And then we go into turn nine. Turn nine being flat or not is a big difference. You can see signs here with a little bit of a lift and Verstappen's carrying almost 10 kilometers an hour more through the corner, all the way through the exit. Um, that gains him just over a 10th of a second. Max has a good drive, nothing crazy into 10. A very clean uh, turn 12, 13. He gives up a little bit on the entrance so that he can go full throttle sooner than signs. Both of them a little bit hesitant. Turn 13, pretty tricky. Both of them with a lift out of the final corner, but Max is able to go off throttle and back on throttle sooner. So I think the Ferrari lacking a little bit of downforce and that, that goes to tell you that their optimum downforce level, they were probably running their optimum downforce level and giving themselves a little bit of scope to race because it's likely that Max would get pole. I think a lot of teams were thinking that. Um, let's look at Norris. We talked about Norris. Norris is P3 in qualifying. So let's look at that. I think that deserves a little bit of attention this weekend. And I think you can agree with me on that one. So here's Norris's lap in red. Again, I think Max also had a bit of a toe, but we also know that the McLaren is not particularly fast in a straight line. Uh, Max has gained 0.2 seconds prior to braking for turn one. Uh, actually, Lando gets a very, very good drive out of turn one. So looking at this, I would say Max probably over pushed the entry to turn one. Uh, Lando gains back probably a tenth or so. But then again, going through turn three, Max claws this back. And then through turn four to turn seven, Max is finding lap time everywhere. Lando with an excellent turn seven. That's the tricky left hander into seven, eight. You go wide and use the exit curb and then into the fast right hander turn nine. Uh, Lando is also flat through turn nine, but look how much speed the Red Bull carries. Probably another five, six kilometers end of straight with DRS on. Lando with a very, very good turn 10 into 11 and also a very strong 12 into 13. Similar lift and similar time delta through turn 14. So Lando's lap pretty good. Uh, maybe he didn't have a toe and maybe Max did, but otherwise most of Lando's lap is sector two or turn four to turn seven and then lacking top speed. So. I think from what we know about the McLaren, I would uh, I'd hats off to Lando on that lap. That's a pretty, pretty good lap. Now let's look at something that we usually do. Let's, let's look at the top speeds and we're gonna make a little bit of a speculation about the race. So these are, this is Leclerc on the top right. 
on let me move my camera you can see it right so here's everybody's speeds and lap times so to the left of the chart is top speed end of straight and to the right of the chart is top speed high top speed so slow on the left fast on the right but at the top of the chart is a slow lap time and the bottom of the chart is a fast lap time you can see here max sitting somewhere four kilometers an hour off of russell and leclerc uh i think russell had a bit of a toe but for the most part red bull relatively fast and relatively quick now here's the thing that we're looking at in terms of people being to race particularly well norris hamilton alonso and piastri so basically all of the mercedes powered cars except for the williams we know the williams runs a pretty slippery and you saw you saw the underside of the williams car in monaco it's like they're missing so much detail and tricks and bells and whistles compared to the other the top teams diffusers so that's absolutely wild to me but they also don't have much downforce and they don't have much drag either but in terms of every mercedes powered car except for the williams is down here this i think was a super toe for russell i cannot tell that he ran lower downforce in qualifying maybe he did but i think uh alpines should race well in terms of top speed they've been okay in terms of pace in terms of tires um uh, perez shouldn't have too much trouble coming through this isn't I hope this isn't an indication of Perez's pace. I think he just had a scuffed qualifying session, but a lot of drivers had a really crap qualifying session. So let's see. Now I asked this question on Twitter earlier, and if you're not following me on Twitter, do be sure to check it out because I also will always drop little little tidbits and nuggets about what's happened with the data. And um, and if you're not checking out the uh, buy me a coffee, do check that out exclamation data in the chat or check the link uh, below in the YouTube. Um, who was flat out, nearly flat out in qualifying? The answer, Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot was almost flat out in qualifying through turn 14. So let's see if that was important or not for their lap time. And I, th I think you guys have already heard my answer implied somewhere. So we look at the lap. Um, Lando just, I'm oh, sorry, he loses, Stroll loses about two tenths of a second, just like the McLaren. Top speed on the Red Bull is insane. Lance does a really decent job through five and seven. Max not as quickly, but look at the top speed and the Red Bull everywhere. Despite both of them being flat out through turn nine, again, the Red Bull's gaining lap time here. Uh, Stroll with a decent turn 10, 11 and a decent 12, 13. But look at this. Max is able to carry so much speed out of 12 into 13 and go on full throttle. And look at this. Turn 14, Lando just comes off maybe 5% throttle. Max has a, a quick lift. No difference in lap time there. No difference in lap time there. So if you're, if you're thinking, if you're Aston Martin, it's like, should they have run less wing? Probably not because for Aston Martin's car and how much drag the, the overall car has, that was probably their best compromise in lap time. And I think in the races, especially in Nan Fernando's case, having a little bit too much drag on the car really hasn't been that detrimental to him. Um, but yeah, here's uh, here's something interesting. So Alonso, I mean, Alonso built up to it, but he, I think everybody knows Alonso had quite a bit on the table left, but here's here's Alonso's lap time build up through qualifying. So I've got lap eight, 11, 14, and 17. So 17 was his fastest lap. And you can see 14, sorry, lap 14, which was Q3 run one. That was his fastest lap. But on his final run, he was up nearly two tenths uh, by turn four, up, down, up, down. And then he loses it exiting turn 10 into turn 11. I, I, I don't I don't feel like that's Alonso's pace. I think they had some car issues today. So before we, I think that's, all the cool stuff I wanted to see about qualifying. There's a bunch of other stuff we could look at. We go into every single driver's data. But if you want to see all the details and all the data and all the compares, I've got those on the Buy Me a Coffee. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, qualifying analysis. I know it was a little bit, a little bit all over the place because this was not, this was not a typical uh, qualifying. But it was, it was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to this Grand Prix. So I'll see you guys over on Twitch.tv/front/slash/break. Uh, don't forget to follow the main YouTube channel as well, and uh, we'll be seeing you guys soon.